The following is a shear by Rabbi Chaim Yehuda Gruber, given very shortly after the very sad events that happened in Borough Park regarding a young boy being murdered. This shear is compiled from three shears on the subject given at the Tub and Square Schools in Montreal. I want to talk about what happened in Borough Park. Terrible, terrible tragedy. Shocking tragedy done by somebody who was really sick in the mind, somebody very, very perverted. And sometimes people have lost faith in Hashem when terrible calamity has happened and they can't understand why. How could Hashem be El Rachum Lechanun? How could He be so merciful if such terrible things happen? We don't understand. Hashem is El as you said. Well, we can understand what we can understand, but we must recognize that Hashem is not to blame for whatever difficulties happen in life. Because Hashem, Boreola, made the world such so that everything can be perfect, so long as everyone does the right thing. That there is enough abundance in this world so that everyone is fed, so that everyone is taken care of so long as everyone does the right thing, and that we have an ability to do the right thing, so long as we properly control ourselves. The Creator cannot be blamed, because the Creator gave us something that can be perfect, so long as we do it. But the Creator also gave us freedom of choice, because we're not robots. So, we have to choose the right thing to do. It says in the Torah that Hashem is placed before us life and death, and we have to choose life. Hashem has given us a world that can be perfect, if we make it so. So when terrible things happen, we can't blame Hashem, because it was done by people using their Bechira. But it's our job to fix the world, to make it perfect. Hashem cannot be blamed, not for this incident that happened in Borough Park and and not the most terrible things, even including the Holocaust, that it had to do with people's decisions, that they made the wrong decisions. But the time will come, Bismani Mashiach, when everyone will make the right decisions, and the world will become perfected. Returning to this particular case about what happened in Borough Park, how is it that we could do Tikkun Olam in this case, so to prevent such sick, crazy things from happening in the future? So to answer this question, let's remember how David Melech asked Hashem why he made crazy people. Hashem's answer to David was causing a circumstance where he had to pretend to be crazy. So this was the answer. Hashem didn't create craziness, but people do it to themselves due to social reasons. Craziness is a coping mechanism for when one no longer can cope. David had to cause himself to be crazy in order for it to fit in. So Hashem is saying this is how craziness starts. But if people start pretending when they're young enough, children, they frustrate themselves who they really want to be just to fit in so they don't get beat up or they don't get made fun of, then these people become crazy because they're suppressing natural ritzones. And whenever natural ritzones are suppressed or frustrated, over time they have to come out and they could explosively come out. How we know Hashem didn't create craziness by nature? Because if people were born crazy, humanity wouldn't exist. No, there people are would people be that were born crazy. You have to admit that people are crazy. Chas v'chalila. When Mashiach comes, the children become sweet as honey. When Mashiach okay. comes, we get rid of evil from the world. Um, it's not because there's a new Bria that humans are different. It's because, it's because of they, do, bad they do... Right, because we do... Because our heart is circumcised, so we don't have a desire to do bad. It has to do with our upbringing. I don't want people to think that I am excusing this sicko from Borough Park. I'm not excusing him, okay? I'm really, really not excusing him. But this first part of the shir is designed to give us some hope, right? And an understanding of how such a thing could happen and not to blame Hashem. That it's up to us to prevent these things. It's also up to us to have the shmirah to make sure they don't happen again for those who have already been perverted. But it's important to understand that these things happen for reason. And the answer, of course, is to know the difference between a good ratzon and one that isn't. To know the difference between good and bad. And those ratzons that have a redeeming value, if they're properly nurtured, have to be allowed to come out. Otherwise, 
how is it that the, these things wouldn't happen again? If there was a raton that somehow wasn't in the human's best interest, we wouldn't exist, <laughs> you see, because it goes against their survival instinct that humanity would cease to exist because the raton that people have, it would, they, they would self-destruct. What do we learn regarding somebody who has a murderous inclination? What is his profession supposed to be? Shochet. A shochet. You see, that's right. He was a butcher for a year in Memphis. He was? I watched it and, uh, yeah. Ah. Okay. Memphis was a piece of the way, but he was a butcher. A goyish rest, a goyish place, in a big supermarket, for a year. Interesting. Yeah, I saw an interview with his, with his rabbi. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So hence, so we see the truth of what Chazal teaches us. Again, this is not to say that the sick people and that sick person in Borough Park, this is an excuse for them. It's not, because we have different nisayons and we're meant to overcome them. But we have to recognize how it happens so to prevent it. And for those, sadly, that it's already happened to, we also have to protect ourselves from them. But first, it's important to understand how it happens. And how it happens is when natural ritzones are suppressed so that people frustrate themselves and they grow up never having their real desires fulfilled. So that it has to come out somehow. And how these people we know are... talking about the psychologist. Is Hashem not the greatest psychologist? Wait a second. Isn't this a psychological answer that Hashem gave to David Amelech, saying he said he had to cause him to be crazy? So meaning Hashem is saying to David Amelech, people make themselves crazy because they force themselves to fit into roles what really aren't them. It's like Masay Mitzrayim, when people are in very narrow places. And how do we know that these crazies are so concerned about fitting into society? Because they act normal in their neighborhood, with their next door neighbors, with their wives. So when they find these serial killers, when they found them, eventually, all over the world, they've interviewed their next door neighbors, interviewed their wives, and what have they found out? Oh my God, I had no idea, the neighbors say, or the wife says. And what did the wife say? She couldn't expect it. Very nice. The children. Oh, okay. Another they perfect that, example. Um, they only separated because of a clash of character. But she was very nice. But never. Um, how do you say? Um, well, she's a different. They never suspected. Yeah. They always. She. She knew it was lonely. Uh, interesting, but he wasn't. Um, not. 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 Um, right. So. Dangerous. So this is the perfect example. Do you see a circumstance where the wife did not even know? This is proof positive that these people are so concerned about appearances. So they fit themselves into these little roles, but because they're suppressing their raton, which weren't allowed to be nurtured from when they were used, they eventually became crazy, so they came out and went nuts. It's even with animals. I had a friend who had a roommate who was a woman, and she had two cats, and she used to live in an apartment, but she moved to a house now where she was living, and the, o- the front door opened up onto the street. She didn't want the cats to go out. So for the first month, the cat would try to get out the doors, both of them, and she'd shoo them back in with her foot or whatnot. After a month, one of the cats escaped. It didn't come back for four days. When it came back, it was limping, cut, etc. And I said to her as follows, had you allowed the cat to go out at first, which is its nature, it wants to explore, it would have crept out slowly, explored its territory, known what it, where it was safe, its yard, for instance, would belong to the house because you were there. It would have natural protection from other cats and da-da-da. It would have a little area and it would have been very cautious by nature and it would have been fine. So it could have had its freedom and it would have been safe. Everyone would have been happy. But because you prevented it from having its natural freedom, when it finally escaped, it went wild. Furthermore, it was scared to come back because it knew that or it thought that you would be so angry at it because it did something that you had escaped. It went and it knew that you didn't want it to do it. So, when children have natural desires, which the parents think are bad desires, because sadly we live in a world that sufficiently doesn't know right from wrong. Like Ninva, it's like people who... <laughs> sufficient means enough. That people think they're doing good when they're doing bad, and people think that they're doing bad when they're doing good. Hence, Sadik Virawa, when Russia Vitovla. But it, in truth, it's not. Of course, how could... You know, Hashem is in the Torah, it says He pays us back for our good deeds with good and bad deeds with bad. That's in truth. But when we live in Hester Panim, it's Rasha Vitovlo and Sadik Viralo, because people in truth don't know the difference between good and bad.
So this is the circumstance. So when children, of course, are raised this way, of course, natural ritzones, things that are good, people think are bad, so they suppress them and vice versa. But they have to come out somehow. And of course, I'm not saying that everything we're doing is wrong. <laughs> Obviously, that's not the case. But enough so that it's sufficient enough. I know people that could express themselves whatever they want. People that could express however they want, whatever they want. And they even saw it. I know someone called Geiger. You heard of him? He's a millionaire, multimillionaire. He became about to us. He could express, he could do whatever he wants. He's divorced, he has the billionaire actually. And even so, he, they, they hospitalize him. He's not normal. But someone has too much freedom without nurturance, without guidance, of course. That could be equally no, I mean, as bad. There's a lot of ways. I ah, th- th- we're, this, we're speaking about one particular incident having to do with. With this particular thing. So, from this we understand the answer to the problem. Because these crazy, perverted people, without giving them any excuses for themselves, you could at least see how they want to be good, but they just can't. Because that's what happens when natural law is frustrated. When ratzons that have to be expressed, that Hashem put in us, that need to be expressed, are frustrated... This is the natural product of it. And how do we know this is the natural product of it? Because these crazy people have the same simonim in all the societies, in whichever different countries. So this is how we know it's true. Do you see? And how do I say they want to be good, but they just can't? Because their neighbors didn't know. I just read in the newspaper that a plane was going to Europe, had to stop somewhere in America, that because someone was being very rude, it was this huge disturbance. And then they said afterwards, and he's a well-respected student at school. Obviously, you know, there's two sides to the story, but this, uh, this is just coming to the mind now. This is a slightly different circumstance than what happened in Borough Park, because apparently, you know, there is no question that this person in Borough Park did it, while I think this person pleaded innocent. But still, whatever the circumstance, we know this is true even from our actions. Something even that happened in your brother's house that I had to apologize to your brother. Yes. To the Tabarov. I had a little blow up. He didn't think it was anything to apologize for, but I I said something. I said it in a a tone, a a little aggravated tone. And after I said it, I said, oh, I shouldn't have spoken that way. And I apologized to him, and he didn't even notice it. But I noticed it. And it was related to the time I was doing the Tilat Yadayim. I was being silent. I was suppressing myself from not speaking, say, for a certain period of time, and da-da-da-da. So then when I did speak, it came out a little strong. So this is an example, and it's natural. This is just what happens, that when people frustrate themselves, it gets bottled up, their emotions. And then when it comes out, if they don't have the right patience or seichel, boom. So we know this is the mechanism for these things to happen. So we could understand why these crazy sociopath killers in every society, they have similar patterns. So we know just what's going on. I want to talk about Golas Mitzrayim. And where is Golas Mitzrayim? It's in our minds. And... It's something that you can see is responsible for what happened in Borough Park. Because what does Mitzrayim mean? Narrowness. Tsar. Tsar is a very narrow place. Mina Metzar Karatiya. So Mitzrayim, Tsar, in plural, Tsarim. But with a mem before it, Mitzarim. It's a product of someone being in so many different things that chain them in. So many different obligations, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do, so they can't make progress. They get stuck. Sometimes, you have so much to do, you don't do anything. You have this to do, and this to do, and this, and this, and this, and da 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 So this is Mitzrayim. And Mitzrayim could come in many spheres. It can come in obligations. Have to work to make the money, to do this, to da-da-da-da-da-da-da, all these kind of things. And Mitzrayim can also come in terms of not being able to express oneself. <laughs> that somebody is chained. That one cannot express who they really are. This is also being in Mitzrayim. So you see how what we were talking about 
all who have been raised in a way so that they couldn't express their natural desires, so that it could be properly nurtured, so that they could turn out to be productive citizens, that these people are in Golis Mitzrayim, because they're in such chains. To think of Maase Mitzrayim in this fashion, think of Moshe Rabbeinu. What happened to him? He saw someone from Bnei Yisrael suffering. So there was a Mitzri hitting uh, Ivri, someone from Bnei Yisrael, and Moshe saw this. And Moshe, what happened to Moshe? He blew up. Why did he blow up and kill this guy? Because Moshe obviously had been suppressing himself. He found out who he was. He found out that he was from B'nai Yisroh, from part of this oppressed people. And he grew up in Paro's palace. So he found out who he really was, but he couldn't be who he really was. He couldn't discover himself and express himself growing up where he was. So Moshe frustrated himself. And then he just blew up when this mystery was killing, hitting rather, someone from B'nai Yisrael. But don't misunderstand me. I'm not here saying that what Moshe Rabbeinu did was wrong. And for sure I'm saying that what this Sikko and Baro Park did was 100% wrong. Rather, what I'm saying is that growing up in Mitzrayim, growing up frustrated, makes people eventually explode. For good or for bad. It could be good in terms of no longer putting up with wicked behavior like Moshe Rabbeinu. Or it could be bad, as what happened in Borough Park. But even if, like Moshe Rabbeinu, it's for good that someone finally says, I'm not putting up with this anymore. This is still problematic. It's not a peaceful way to exist. Obviously, the best way to exist is from the first sign of frustration, the first sign that somebody is suppressing themselves, frustrating themselves, forcing them to be somebody who they're not, then that's when they have to be true and express themselves and say who they are so that they can peacefully come to terms with their environment as opposed to blowing up. Okay, so returning to Moshe. Suddenly, all Moshe's frustration, boom, they came out. Moshe killed this man, hit him in the dirt, hit him in the sand, and then just went back to his regular life. <laughs> exactly as how many serial killers who have done most heinous crimes and then they're not discovered. They just go back yeah. to where they live, say hello to their neighbors, and da-da-da, as if nothing. Yeah. That's exactly what Moshe did. Yeah, yeah. He only left. Why? Because it was discovered. So he fled for his life. Yeah, yeah. Do you see? Because it was discovered as exactly probably what would happen with how many serial killers. That if they found out that the police were onto them, boom, they leave. So do you see how this is Masay Mitzrayim? Yeah. And that this is all a product of Golis Mitzrayim? Yeah. That's in the, the heart, the heart, the heart of the Yiddish community? But Baruch Hashem, there's hope. Because just from this you can see how Chazal says that no matter what Ratzon someone has, he can turn it to good. Because just look at the Ratzon that Moshe Rabbeinu had. And look how he turned it to good. Yesterday, after I gave the same shear at Skver yesterday, I opened the Gemara, and it was to Chalun. And you know where it opened to? The three photos where the heart is cut right down the middle. This is a deep, deep thing. It's, it's a bizarre thing. It's somehow... It, it's like Shari Rachamim somehow, that's what's coming to mind, to see the humanity in the sickest people, to somehow recognize through the Masim of Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest Navi, how the sickest people don't have to be, they don't have to exist, and how they became that way, so that in the future we don't have to live a life like this, with such sick things happening that you can see a wider picture outside of what is going on. So that my only prayer is that this little boy's life is turned into a Kiddush Hashem, that these words to understand how to prevent these horrible, horrible things, so that no mother and father ever has to go through this again. <laughs>